us will point you toward a specific enemy. Captain Arbuthnot, I know that you are the only person on this train to smoke e-cigarettes. We found a vial of e-liquid at the crime scene. Will you talk to me about this, or should I pass on what I've learned to the police? All right. Come in if you must. I have just a few questions for you. Very well. Let's hear them. The young English lady, Mademoiselle Debenham, was at the Tocatlian Hotel. Perhaps you met her there? We exchanged a few words. Fellow Brits abroad, that sort of thing. Hmm. What can you tell me about Mademoiselle Debenham? Nothing whatsoever. We barely spoke. The director of the Orient Express, Monsieur Book, thinks the assassin is a woman. And that is enough to accuse her. She had nothing to do with this murder. How can you be so certain? The idea is absurd. Ratchet was a perfect stranger to her. She'd never seen him before. Ah, did she tell you so? Well, yes, maybe she did. She may have commented once upon his somewhat unpleasant appearance. If a woman is concerned, as you seem to think, to my mind, without any evidence, I can assure you that Miss Debenham could not possibly be implicated. Hmm, it is clear that the captain is defending Miss Debenham, a woman he supposedly doesn't know very well. What were you doing last night around a quarter past one? One fifteen. I believe I was still talking to that young American fellow, Mr. McQueen, the secretary of the man who was killed. We were in his compartment. He was a friend or acquaintance of yours? No, I never saw him before this journey. We'd hit it off at dinner, and the conversation continued into the early hours. Until what time was that? Until one forty-five or so. Then I retired to my room and went to sleep. There is nothing you can recall last night that in any way struck you as suspicious? It's nothing. A mere detail. Allow me to be the judge. Well, before returning to my room, I went to the lounge car to get a glass of water. When I was passing through the first-class corridor, I noticed that the door, which is just after your room, 201, was not quite closed. And the person who was inside peered out in a furtive sort of way. Then he closed the door quickly. I know there's nothing in that, but it was the furtive way it was done that caught my attention. Struck me as a bit odd. I understand. Thank you for letting me know. Could you uh, write down your address here, please? My address? If you insist. This man is right-handed. Is this e-cigarette liquid yours? What flavor is it? Banana. Well, that is awkward. That's my flavor of choice. But I have no idea what it was doing there, whatever. Can you explain how it ended up there? I have no idea. I never entered the man's room, Poirot. That's the truth. Thank you, Captain. You're welcome.
Captain Arbuthnot is the only passenger to smoke an e-cigarette. Even if this liquid in Ratchet's room is a solid clue, he has an alibi. I cannot accuse him without any other proof. That's the right answer. Uh, pardon this intrusion, Mademoiselle Olsen, but something you told me earlier confuses me. Oh, please, come in. How can you be sure Mademoiselle Debenham was in bed all night? As I told you, I am a very light sleeper. The slightest noise wakes me up. If Fräulein Debenham had gotten out of her bed, I would have heard her. I, I got up this morning around 8 a.m. She was sleeping soundly. Are you certain you would have heard her? Yes. Why are you asking? I spoke to Mademoiselle Debenham and she told me that she got up around five o'clock in the morning. She opened the door and looked down the corridor. It was then that she saw a woman in a red kimono. How do you explain that? I think I must have been sleeping very soundly not to have heard it. Oh, but does that make me a suspect? I am not accusing anyone, mademoiselle. Do not worry. I am just trying to determine what happened last night. Thank you for your testimony. That was easy. So, Poirot, I hope you are progressing in your investigation. There is no trace of the murder weapon on the train, as yet. The killer could have hidden it anywhere. It must be somewhere. Indeed, as you say, it must be somewhere. According to Dr. Constantine's report, the stab wounds were made by at least one right-handed and one left-handed person and with different strength. For the moment, everyone I have checked is right-handed. It is impossible to draw any conclusions as yet. However, 
I still have a few people to interrogate, notably the Russian princess. You still have many avenues to explore? Indeed, the case is far from over, mon ami. I identified the person responsible for the bottle of liquid for the vape found at the crime scene. So, this is our culprit? Do we hold him? No, unfortunately, this bottle belongs to Captain Arbuthnot, but he has an alibi, confirmed by Monsieur McQueen for the time of the murder. Monsieur Book, Monsieur Poirot, Michel, calm down. But it's Mrs. Hubbard. She says she found the murder weapon in her room. She's very upset. Let's go, Poirot. Mm -hmm.